Hi, it's Tracy from Purple Cats Quilting. Welcome to the Creative Studio tonight. I'm here to talk about making pillowcases. Um, as you can see, I have my grandma shirt on. It's one of my favorite names um, this weekend. We're lucky enough to have family over and my grandkids came down to my personal stash and picked out stuff to make a pillowcase and I sent them each home with a pillowcase. It was fun to watch how they picked it. Um, it's an easy gift. It's a great gift. It doesn't take much time. Um, great um, for Christmas, birthdays, even as a hostess gift if you're going to someone's house. Um, simple and easy. We have some kits that we're going to have on the website but I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to put them together and what to do if you get directional fabric coming off the bolt because that that can be um, a real trick. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So first of all, I want to show you this beautiful pillowcase that I made. I made them king size because that's the size I use on my bed. This one is really old. This is when Lineworks first came out. It's my absolute favorite is Tall Tales. I love using the stripes. Um, like I said, this one came off of my bed and I've used it so many times. I love the black and white. Here's one I just made today. Um, it had a little bit of uh, the loons, the Charlie Harper art and so um, for every pillowcase you need a fabric, um, a little splash of color and then the casing end, the pillowcasing end there um, just really gives it a real pop. So most of the most of the kits that I've made up are for a queen size pillow. They'll finish at about 20 by about 30. If you want a longer pillow um, pillowcase like for a king size you're gonna have to check the measurements of your pillow and add it on to the side. So here's another one I made with Tula Pink Holiday Homies at Flannel. I have several pillowcases on my bed. Um, when we made our Holiday Homies quilts, I made pillowcases to go with it. It's just so soft and luscious. So we're going to go over here. We're going to talk about how most fabric comes off the bolt. I'm hoping I have my cutter here got lots of fabric piled up on my desk there we go so for for the pillowcase kit or to make a pillowcase at home for most pillows like a queen size or whatever if you're making it as a gift for someone that's kind of a basic beginner place to start you need 26 inches of fabric for the main piece so you're going to cut 26 inches of fabric and so I just want to show you when this comes off the bolt we're going to attach our splash of color and our casing here and it's going to be great. It's going to be the right way. I'm going to show you what the wrong way looks like when it comes off the bolt and it's printed in a directional print that doesn't um, make it easy to make our pillowcase. So I pulled a few fabrics. I pulled Tula Pink's um, read between the lines. So normally I would come along and I would cut off 26 inches of fabric and I'm going to add my casing on to the end. So let's just cut it off because I have lots of fabric and I just want to show you how this works. So do you see where our zebras are going to be laying on their side? Our pillows don't go lengthwise on the bed. They go, they go widthwise and this is going to be wrong. So there are a few fabrics that are like that. I started pulling them. This beautiful collector's print with the lions. It's wrong and I, it would drive me crazy if my lions were sideways on my bed for a pillowcase. So. Um, I just want to show you what I would do. This one here, it would come off really nice sideways, right? These are perfect. We want them sideways. We want them to lay on the bed. Our pillowcase is going to be long. It's going to be wide this way. So I'm going to show you what I do. I am going to cut and I did this in all your kits already. If you buy a kit from me, it's already pre-cut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make that shape. I'm going to adjust it because it's lengthwise, um, because it's directional. I'm going to cut 42 inches of fabric. 
so it does add a little bit to the expense using directional fabric but to me it's worth it because I don't want those zebras laying on their side so what I'm doing is I'm cutting 42 inches then I'm going to put it together so my zebras are right side up and normally I cut 26 inches for a queen size pillow so I'm going to cut that 26 inches off for my pillow and then I'm going to have a little bit left over but that'll be okay because I'm a bag maker and a quilter I will find ways to use that fabric so 24 26 so what I've done so this is just my piece that I'm going to save for bag making maybe make a retreat bag or something with it so just so you can see the difference, this is the piece of fabric I took off the bolt and it's going the right way. I'm going to add my stripes and my casing on the end. But the other piece is directional. But now that I've cut it and trimmed it, it's going to look exactly the same. So my, my zebras will be laying right side up on my bed. Okay, so I'm going to put together a pillowcase now. I had the pandas all laid out. Love the pandas. Everybody loves the pandas. What's really nice about this is Black and white is so timeless and classic. This could be kids' pillowcase. I have them on my in my camper, in my trailer, because I love the black and white. So now we have the 26 inch with the fabric. We're gonna lay it on its side. We take a four inch piece of fabric and we press it in half. That's going to be my little splash of color. Then I'm going to take some clips. I love using clips. And I'm going to go along and I'm going to clip every few inches. I'm going to clip that on there. If you're a beginner, you could take this and baste it if you wanted. I find the clips, I love clips. You can use pins also. But I love clips. I find them very easy to use. Clip it along. Now there's a real trick to this pillowcase. I've made quite a few in the last couple days, so I don't have to check back all the time. But when I haven't made one for a while, I always have to look at the directions. So here's my casing. This is what's going to be on the edge of my pillow. So what I want to do is lay it right side down against that edge. And now I'm going to grab those clips and I'm going to clip all three layers now. So I've got my pillowcase main, my pillowcase kind of splash, which is stripes in this case, not a color. Then I have the pillowcase end and I'm going to clip them all together. And this is just really funny how this works. I just love this technique. So then I flip it up and out of the way. Got a big thread there. Now I'm going to roll up my main pillowcase. This is sometimes called a burrito roll pillowcase because you roll it up like a big taco. You bring the casing edge over, the pillowcase edge, then you flip it. And now the other side of that casing, I'm going to clip. So it's all one big unit. And I've got the pillowcase itself, the body, the main, rolled up inside, tucked away, out of the way, because this is the seam I'm going to sew now. We're going to go over to the sewing machine 
and I've got it clipped, all rolled up, and I'm going to sew it. And I'm going to sew, I like to th sew a 3 8 inch seam for this one, just to make sure I catch everything and get it out of the way. So I'm going to start by back stitching. And now I'm just going to sew a 3 8 inch seam. And the one thing that I need to make sure, I can feel that pillowcase mane is all rolled up in there. I don't want it to get sewn into my seam. But I've got it all rolled up really nice. I'm pulling out my clips as I go. I can take my stiletto, line everything up nice and neat. And I just use a regular, I have bone colored thread in. It's one of those blender threads that goes with just about everything of the base so I'm just lining this all up and feed it through all the way to the end 3 8 inch seam Yeah, it was fun to watch my grandkids go through the room. Jasper picked rainbow. Ben picked red and orange with rainbow. Evie picked tulip pink ladybugs. All right, so there it is, all sewn. Just double check, make sure I got the other side. Now you reach in and you pull it out. It's like a magic act. What's really nice about this pillowcase is we're going to have a French seam on it so there will be no open seams to fray because your pillowcases get washed and worn and flipped about. So look at that. Isn't that pretty already? So there's my pillowcase mane, my sashing, and my pillowcase edge. And I love the stripes and the polka dots with that. Now we're going to go over to the pressing station. Give it a good press. Open this out. Oh, it's so darn cute. And so I like to press this nice and flat. Get this seam pressed. Some people don't use as wide. In my kits, I've cut you four inches, which makes a three inch, so a one and a half inch finished sashing there. But if you don't like it as much, you can make it smaller. I know my friend Nancy makes hers a little bit smaller. It depends on whether you just want that little peekaboo bit of color. It's not going to make your pillow any smaller or any bigger because it is just adding some color, like a flange. So I get my iron nice and hot. Pull this out, make sure it's all nice and flat. So just check the other side, make sure I've got it all up. All right, so now this is going to seem really strange, but we are going to have wrong sides together. And this is how we get that French seam look, is we're going to put wrong sides together first so the right sides are out. I'm going to just trim this edge off here. You'll find that fabrics are all different widths. So sometimes, you know, some will be hanging out. We just trim it down. Now I'm going to use my clips again. And I'm going to clip down this open seam. And like I said, this seems weird. Why am I sewing it wrong sides together? But it's because we're going to flip it and do a French seam, which encloses the seam 
so it doesn't fray. And it looks nice too. Looks nice. A French seam is something that's used in fancy sewing of fancy dresses, especially if you've got like voile or something that would fray easy. So now we go back to the sewing machine. We're going to use a quarter inch seam. We backstitch at the beginning and at the end. I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam. You want to make sure you get both of these in. Go slowly over that little bump there. If you're sometimes I hand guide my wheel. Look at I've got this salvage here. Isn't that pretty? Do your pink line works. Pandemonium. So I get to the corner. I'm just going to stop and pivot. This new machine. It's a Janome HD9. I love it. It's just a straight stitch machine. I've started using the knee bar, which I absolutely love. I'm going to go right to the end. I didn't quite get down to a quarter inch margin at the end here. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Maybe stop to stitch or too early. I'll finish off with a. We're going to go back to the cutting table. Just going to have a look at it again. I really want that quarter inch seam because when I flip and stitch this seam, I want to be able to hide it. We're actually enclosing that quarter inch seam. So I'm just going to trim it to a quarter. If you find that your seam isn't small enough. You can do that also. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it inside out. I'm going to poke out those corners. I'm going to take it over and press it one more time because you know me, I like to press, press, press. And then we are going to press everything out. And where that seam was before, I'm going to take a 3 8 inch seam and close it up. So that's down the side that has the seam and across the end. So we'll go back to the sewing machine one more time. We're going to do a 3 8 inch seam because we want to be able to cover and close that seam that's in there, that quarter inch seam now. Woohoo! I've got this on the slowest setting and it just goes like crazy. It even scares me sometimes. And I'm a really fast sewer. I sew on high, I cook on high. I'm just going to do a 3 8 inch seam just so I make sure I enclose that seam inside. Pivot and finish up down the side. So there is a reason for sewing it wrong sides together first because when we finish up, we have this nice enclosed French seam. It's a neat technique for lots of things. Garment makers use it a lot. I'm going to get my fingers out of the way and use my stiletto. Go down my machine a little bit. Back stitch at the end. So see, uh, this is the inside of the pillowcase and it looks as nice as the outside. There's no raw seams. That's what a French seam is. So now we turn it out.
And again, I'll probably go back and press it one more time. My favorite part. Press, press, press. Oh, it's so cute. Eh? So, yeah, wasn't that a quick, easy sew? Yeah, I love it. I love the black and white. We have um, lots of different kits and stuff up. I'm going to be making lots more in the next little while. We're getting ready to go to a couple quilt shows in the next month or two. So this is a fun, easy project. This is the kind of project you can take to a retreat. It's all in the bag. You just need to add your thread. Um, when you get to the retreat, you can go to the YouTube video and watch how it's done again. Check the measurements. Um, but I hope you like that. I hope that you enjoyed the process. I hope you'll try one and share some pictures. Have a great day.